Hey there, Postal here. So today we're taking out the Seahawk. Uh, let's see what we can do with this. Ooh, there's some planes that are gonna make my life a living. Well, they're not gonna make it fun for me. Um, what is the Seahawk if you're not familiar with it? Well, it's a tier nine British multi-role fighter. It's not really well loved by the community. Um, but that's okay. I think that is unfounded hatred for this plane. Um, the thing of it is, is you're after the tornado and typhoon and tempest. Three really, really dogfighty kind of uh, multi-role fighters. Very maneuverable. Uh, reasonable airspeed. Nobody's going to call them fast, but reasonable airspeed. And what happens is people tend to get to the tier 9 here and expect to be able to keep turning and dogfighting, and it's really not its strength. The Seahawk's strength is its air-to-ground capabilities mixed with its air-to-air -air capabilities. Much more so than the British multi-role fighters before it. Key. Um, and so, yeah, this, this plane can turn fight slightly but you start relying on that and you're going to be dead very quickly the strength of this plane is going to be the strength of so many other multi rolls and that is its ability to do a little bit of everything it got, has a lot more air to ground capability than the, the um, planes previous to it let's see if we can do this stuff Got two more rocket salvos left. We can knock out this ME329 and then use our rockets. Oh, terrible. Terrible timing there. Classic. Didn't have time to wait. Um, 262 is going to hurt us. Let's try to wiggle. We wiggled. What are you doing, cat? Besides being a major distraction. The rockets take about a minute and a half to get back uh, reloaded here. Mine take a little bit longer than that. Uh, that's why I say about. Stock, they take a minute and a half. Um, can we? I think my 20 millimeter cannons should be able to get this. There we go. They're making it very difficult to. Cats DGAF, right? Um. can actually be a huge pain in the butt because it's actually got maneuverability that I wish I had. Um, let's go ahead and get a garrison here. Our rockets will be back up. And we shall move along. Let's get our boost on. Fighters behind us, don't like it. Heavy fighters, I don't necessarily mind as long as they're not actually shooting me. So these guys, I feel like I need to get rid of first. Go, let's turn. Yep, here comes that heavy fighter that I was just talking about. Not wanting to get hit by. If I can knock this guy out, we got the sector. Nice. Um, let's go defend this center part here, really quick. Got a J21 RB doing some some work, which is nice. Air supremacy achieved. Um, this guy's inbound, so we can knock him out. Dang it! It's gonna make life difficult. I do not want to be up here.
Yep, he's not able to do anything there. Um, and he's got, he's clearly got his uh, 209 on a turn build. Um, so, which is fine. Do you. But I need to be mindful that I can't outturn him for nothing. If he had a speed build, I might, might have a chance of some sort. But, um, no. Alright, so let's head back to the center here. Let's push it. We're up by a decent amount, 200 capture points. Uh, but considering they've got the military base, like that could completely change very quickly. Um, man, their 209 is just doing some heavy lifting, isn't he? That's okay, I can lift too. No Gabreski, but... Uh, Go ahead and I'm gonna move over to this garrison here. I'm gonna keep pushing against them. We've gotta keep the pressure going. Um, at 209 is doing really, really well. He's already at 12,000 personal points, so we can't give him an inch is basically what it's gonna come down to. Let's knock out this Tempest really quick. Or help somebody else knock him out. We've got our rockets back, so let's utilize them. Victory is in sight. You are exactly right. Okay, we don't. Just checking the map, making sure that nothing stupid's coming my way. Let's head back to the center. That guy needs to die. Whichever one he is. Oh, this is the 209. Oh shoot, mistakes were made. I can't go like dogfighting those guys. I can't let them focus me down. So let's hyena this. Let's take advantage of the ones that stray away from the pack. Knocked out his engine, nice. Don't know if I'll actually be able to kill him though. I can. Doubly nice. Again, we need to kill that dude. We've won this battle anyway at this point, but. Hello, cannons. Thank you. And that's, that's the way you need to play this plane, is take advantage of those that aren't paying attention to you. Great job today. We'll be yeah, he had a better... A better battle, you know, better personal points. But put yourself in position um, to be effective. Don't put yourself in a position to to have the enemy be effective against you, right? Let's head back real quick. All right, so 12 kills, you know, two ground targets destroyed, nothing crazy. Not, not even a lot of ground damage or aerial damage. It's kind of being where you needed to be and trying to be effective in that situation, whether it's... Do I attack the ground or do I attack the air? If I'm attacking the air, what am I attacking in the air? If I'm attacking the ground, what am I attacking on the ground? And that's why I almost never, I just don't recommend multi-role fighters as a new pilot. You need to understand how the game works, what, what attacking what means what, what's got the speed, what's got the maneuverability. Because a multi-role yeah, you've got the, you've got to think about in the air. Am I maneuvering against this person, or am I trying to outspeed them? You know, can I actually kill this person quickly, or am I SOL? That's just half of it. Okay, now I need to do I attack the ground, or do I not attack the ground? And if I'm attacking the ground, which target is the proper target with my particular setup? So there's a lot going on. Is it impossible to learn? Obviously not. Um, but it's not, I'm not telling anybody to go, you know, go down this line to start off your careers in World of Warplanes or, or the, any of the multi-role lines. You're going to struggle because the strength of a multi-role fighter is it does everything. 
The problem with that strength is it doesn't do anything the best. Um, true jack of all trades means that you will get outturned by planes. You will get outsped by planes. And so you just need to know which planes those are and how, how to approach that. So 12 kills, nothing crazy. Um, I'm not going to pronounce that name properly. The ME209 did really well on the enemy team. Um, and, you know, might be a little frustrated with that loss. But the fact of the matter is we were able to be what we, we needed to be where we needed to be and take advantage of that. And because we were able to take advantage of that, we were able to capture sectors that you could never do in a fighter because we were able to do air to ground damage, right? Um, and that's, again, just something that I really like about multi-role fighters. So how do I have this plane set up, you might ask? Well, it's kind of in flux, actually. I'm, I'm not 100% uh, sold on my setup by any means. Uh, let's talk about the cockpit airframe and engine. That, that I'm a little bit more sold than anything else. As far as the cockpit is concerned, you got to go with the gyroscopic sight, and nothing else really makes sense. Cockpit armor doesn't make sense. G-suit, this plane doesn't go fast enough or turn well enough to implement a G-suit properly. Navigational radio equipment, okay, you know, help your concealment, but the reality is you want your guns to be hitting the target as often as possible, uh, and that's going to be going to be the recommendation there for the cockpit um, equipment. As far as the airframe is concerned, I've got the plane specialized, so I've kind of split the difference here. I've got the polished skin and the lightweight wing frame, so I'm getting some speed and I'm getting some maneuverability. Um, yeah, the argument could be made that the um, advanced polished skin is taking away from maneuverability, and so you're missing out on some of the maneuver maneuverability that you would have from the lightweight wing frame. My argument is, you know, more speed is a good thing. If I can counter some of that lost maneuverability, and actually I'm countering all of that lost maneuverability plus gaining some back, it's worth it in my opinion. One of the equipment slots that I'm kind of uh, on the fence on, I'm sticking with uprated engine, but but literally anything in this slot will do well. Um, the engine does get knocked out from time to time on this plane. I wouldn't recommend using the armor protection, but I could see where somebody would want to do that. Personally, I would want to use one of the other three options. I've got uprated engine, but you could easily put in the boost system, get your boost um, to be more efficient. You don't have the most boost ability on this plane, um, but it is still a multi-role fighter, so you've got more than, than um, a lot of other planes out there. I think it's 16 seconds base. Um, so reduce that down to 13 seconds and get really good boost uh, while you're using the boost. You could also do, if you want to go with a maneuverability build, do a lightweight power unit. This plane isn't known for its maneuverability, but it's not a complete turd. Uh, and so you could conceivably go uh, and get some more maneuverability here. Uh, that would be you know, a completely viable option. So any one of these three bottom options would be my recommendation based on your play style. Again, I've gone with the upgraded engine. Uh, the last one is the one I'm really hesitant on. I've got advanced rocket sight on here. I think I just put this rocket sight on here just to test it out. I never changed it out. I should probably go with the aerodynamic pylon, which will reduce, which will basically increase your overall speed. However, it'll add to the reload time of your rockets. That being said, my current equipment, the rocket sight, adds to the reload of the rockets. It does make the range greater. It also makes the accuracy uh, better slightly which is nice i hate it when i fire a rocket and it like who the heck knows where it's going um kind of situation that's always frustrating so i'm sticking with the rocket site right now probably wouldn't recommend it uh, aerodynamic pylons is probably going to be your best bet uh, another option though is the strength and hard points now this does reduce your overall airspeed but it does help your reload speed of the rocket so if you really are leveraging the rockets it might help you with uh, you know, reducing the overall um, reload time. Um, it looks like you can probably get it up to close to like 20% uh, reduction in reload time, which would be like minus 18 seconds, uh, which isn't a bad thing by any means, uh, but it does look like it does impact the, uh, the overall speed quite a bit. Might be something better uh, built for things like ground attackers. So you might want to avoid that. 
Um, and so the thing with this plane is you really do want to leverage that balance. Yeah, rockets aren't my favorite either. Bombs typically, you know, you just kind of drop and forget kind of thing. Rockets, you need to take time to aim and, and fire. But you've got the ability to do air to ground. You've got the ability to do air to air quite well with your cannons being centrally located. And so my recommendation is leverage that flexibility. I've taken my skill points on my pilot and done that flexibility as well. I would recommend going down the Marksman and Marksman 2 as your first two options on this plane simply because you're going to live and die by your ability to kill enemy aircraft sometimes. And just getting those guns on target, getting the, can the, the actual cannons to hit uh, can save you more often than not. After that, I'd recommend going the Demolition Expert. Again, we should be utilizing our rockets, right? If you're not utilizing your rockets... And this goes for any of the multi rolls that, that really leverage bombs and rockets. If you're not utilizing them, then why are you in that plane? If I didn't want to use the rockets on this plane, I'd just go take out the attacker. Um, and I'd have you know better overall metrics just without the rockets. So utilize the rockets. It doesn't need to be like, you know, you you must fire them every 90 seconds or you know your head'll explode. But we should be firing them. And if you're going to be firing them, then you want them to be effective. So I've got Demolition Expert on here for the 10% extra damage and the 10% boost to the blast um, radius. Uh, last but not least, I've put Aerodynamics Expert on here. I wouldn't recommend that until you specialize the plane. Aerodynamics Expert is going to positively impact all of the... Um, speed and maneuverability equipment, but you don't really get a chance to leverage that until you have specialization and you can put all the equipment in. I'll probably go with aerobatics expert as my next two points. Um, I could change my mind sometime in the future. It's going to be a long time before I get my next two points. But that extra maneuverability will just give me some flexibility in air to air engagements, and I'll, I'll take that. As far as my consumables are concerned, it's my it's my standard consumable setup: first aid kit, um, pneumatic control assist. I put the engine cooling on here, and then universal ammo. Um, I'd rather have that extra ten seconds worth of engine cooling than uh, putting my engine in. But that's me. Most people are going to feel more comfortable having the manual engine restart um, rather than that. Because this plane does do you know air-to-air -air combat, that's why I utilize the pneumatic control assist. If I wasn't relying on my cannons so often, if I wasn't relying on having to shoot down enemy aircraft as often, I might go with the um, whatever the equipment is that puts your wings and tail back in. I also recommend the improved fragmentation. That's the non-premium consumable for the bombs and rockets. Obviously, again, we want to increase the damage of the of the rockets that we're firing. It's just going to make us more effective. Um, that's what they're there for. So that's my overall take on this particular plane. And I apologize, this isn't the world's best game. Actually, it's my worst game that I've had today in the Seahawk. But I recorded two really good games, uh, except uh, I didn't actually hit record. So I'm kind of over it at this point i'm annoyed with myself and feel like i'm repeating myself because i am um so i apologize hopefully this uh above average we'll say game um it, you know entertains enough i'd love to hear your opinion on the seahawk though uh, again i can't tell you the last time i talked to somebody and they were like yeah i like that plane much less somebody that was like yeah it's one of my favorites is it one of my favorites no but I enjoy the I enjoy the plane. I think it's very effective in my hands, and I'm just kind of wondering why it doesn't get more love because I feel like it is a relatively strong multi-role fighter. I'd love to hear your opinion in the comments down below, or uh, feel free to hit me up in Discord. We can always continue the conversation there. Hope you enjoyed this video, and um, I'll catch you in the next one as long as I hit the record button. <sighs> Have a good day. Bye.